things are definitely getting interesting in the crypto and digital asset space. We see a lot of positivity coming about with different companies going for a Bitcoin ETF. We're seeing some banks getting in the fray as far as custodial services. And we're taking a look at just how strong the grip of the SEC is actually weakening on the crypto space. And all these things are looking pretty good, but you have to understand these things are going to take some time. So we'll take a look at that. And then we got to talk about where I've been the last two weeks. If you, you haven't uh, mentioned or I haven't mentioned it, I was uh, in Europe over the last two weeks. Me and the wife went over there for the main reason to go to Coin Bureau Live event. And I was uh, on the panel. It was uh, me, Michael Rosemer from Offshore Citizen, and uh, Jose from BCB Labs. And of course, Guy was uh, the moderator. And we just talked about the different things that we had done moving to different uh, areas of the globe to offset some of crypto taxes and the things that uh, we would do differently. Now, when I was talking about this, I was just talking about all my mistakes and how I would do things a lot differently moving forward. So I will link this video in the description. It was pretty interesting, especially these other two gentlemen and, uh, and their experiences and their recommendations. It's a, it's a do not miss. So I'll link that in the description. You can check that out. And I got to tell you, so during this time, uh, after we did that, it was about a, a half an hour or so, I met a ton of people afterwards. And we talked about crypto. And you got to remember that when I was doing this segment, this was a couple of days after the SEC had come out and said, we're going to sue Coinbase, we're going to sue Binance. These things, these crypto products are a security. And it was a big negative red day, especially on Saturday. Things were down like 28, 32%, somewhere around there. So it was not a very good time to be in crypto because people get scared during this time. But I got to tell you, every single person that I met, they were like, I don't care. I know where things are going. I'm very positive and uh, we're in the right place at the right time. I'm like, that's what I say. And it was amazing just how far down crypto was going. And everybody's like, it's just, it's just temporary. And they were right. And of course, as time went on, we're going to talk about this positivity. It's, uh, it's pretty telling just uh, how people respond to situations. So on top of that, also, we uh, went across uh, the streets, had a couple of beers. And uh, this was across from the actual event at uh, Hercules Pillars. Uh, there's uh, Ben's into the Cryptoverse team. There's Sebastian. There's Macy from Coin Bureau. And then also in the bar, I was sitting down with uh, this guy. Uh, this is Simon Dixon, and he was one of the keynote speakers there as well. I've had Simon on the show multiple times, and it was great just to finally meet this guy in person. We talked a lot of, a lot of different things, and uh, it was just fantastic. I mean, him and Azad and uh, Lady of Crypto and a bunch of different people, and everybody that I met, it was a great time. So having said all that, to catch up to speed, went through Europe, went through Munich, went through Zurich, went through Milan. Now we are back, and here we are. So let's catch up to date. And this is the things that we're talking about. Now, everybody knows about the BlackRock uh, Bitcoin ETF. And this has been talked about numerous times. I'm not going to really talk too much about it. Uh, just to say that uh, this, I don't think it's going to get approved. And I know people will say, that's ridiculous, Rob, because they've had over 230 different ETF applications and only one time have they been rejected. So when they go in, it's already a guarantee. And Simon is actually uh, saying that here. He's like, uh, it's a lock. It's a lock. It's going to happen. I will just warn you of this. Nothing is guaranteed. These things could fall through. So just be aware of that. But if it does, it doesn't matter because BlackRock is already coming out and saying, look, there is a ton of interest in this, so much so that we are putting our A on the line and we're going to do a Bitcoin ETF. On top of that, we're going to talk about Fidelity and everybody else. So even if this gets rejected, it doesn't matter. BlackRock, the largest fund in the world with 10 trillion assets under management, is saying, People want Bitcoin, so it doesn't really matter. It'll be very interesting what the SEC does. But what I did, so I want to let you all in on the, on the happenings that is going on. Simon said it's 100%. And uh, I said, okay, Simon, I'll bet you it gets turned down. And if it isn't approved, you have to wear an I Heart Mashinsky t-shirt on your next live stream. I'll do the exact same thing if it is approved. So just so everybody knows, for this spot Bitcoin ETF, there's like it's like a 45 day waiting period. Then the SEC can can answer. Then they can ask for some feedback. Then it can go some more time. It really comes down to this: if it doesn't get approved by February of 2024, they have to say something. They're either going to deny it or approve it. But the end time date is February 2024. At that time, when it doesn't get approved, I think it's not going to. Then uh, we'll see what it works. I would love to be wrong. I would love to be wrong in this one. I just don't see it happening. And of course, Simon says accepted. So this will be a good one. If I am wrong, I will gladly wear that T-shirt on my show and on Simon's show. 
And that's what's happening with the BlackRock Bitcoin ETF. On top of that, uh, Fidelity came out and said, hey, uh, we want a uh, Bitcoin ETF. And they're also looking to buy Grayscale. I thought it was great. The other thing that I think is great about this one is that they also opened up a wealth management section for crypto. And it looks something like this. This was actually on their website. It's uh, Fidelity launches Fidelity Crypto for wealth managers. And when I saw this, I just said to myself, it doesn't matter even if they get approved or not approved. I think, you know, they might have a shot as well, but who knows? I mean, I don't think BlackRock's going to get it, but whatever. But it doesn't matter. Again, it doesn't matter. What it comes down to is this. If they have wealth management and they have either their custody or non-custody, they're going to talk to their clients. And they're going to say stuff like this. And I said, this is in my tweet. I said, look, they're going to say, look, Mr. Smith at Fidelity, we believe a balanced portfolio is a strong portfolio. We highly recommend getting into a basket of crypto along with other traditional assets for diversification. Let's just go 2 to 4% or 1% to 3%, whatever else it is. So it doesn't matter if they do it, but they're going to talk to all their clients. And why is this important? This is a graph from Lawrence Leppard. Lawrence, I'll link him in the description. Like this guy, uh, he's on Twitter. He's an investment manager, equity management associates, LLC. And he put out this really great piece of information. Imagine Fidelity talking to all their clients when they've got people like the baby boomers who were born between 1946 and 64. You know, they have $78 trillion in assets. Let me say that one more time. $78 trillion in assets. What if they did, I don't know, one to three percent, just one percent, two percent, whatever. And they got equities and real estate and other assets, pensions, private businesses, blah, blah, blah. Then you got Generation X, 1965 to 80. They had 47 trillion. And unfortunately, the silent generation born before 1946 had only a, a paltry 18 trillion. And millennials, sorry, 14 trillion. Doesn't matter. That's a pretty good swath of people that have a lot of assets. And if you've got somebody like Fidelity sitting you down and going, you know what, maybe we should diversify. And we're also this provider for crypto, whether that be custody or not, we think you should do it. I think we're in the right place at the right time. I think that's pretty positive. On top of the fact, Deutsche Bank just came out today and it looks like they want to have a crypto custody license. So what does that mean for a bank? They're going to actually provide crypto, probably Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Ethereum, just guessing. They're gonna custody that for their clients because in all honesty, Banks are kind of coming, going to the wayside. So I think this also is a step in the right direction. You can just see how things are starting to progress with crypto and digital assets. And then finally, this is another big story for today. <laughs> Citadel and Fidelity are a backed EDX crypto exchange that has just gone live. And we can see here that they're backed by Citadel, Fidelity, and Charles Schwab. And the company recently unveiled the launch of its digital assets market today on June 20th. And what are they going to be giving people? Trading only for cryptos, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, mostly the safety ones. And why? Well, because they don't want to deal with the SEC. SEC has already said Bitcoin's a commodity, so why not? Ethereum, they're, they're leaning to that same way because of all the amount of decentralization. Litecoin is also proof of work. And Bitcoin Cash, a fork of Bitcoin, seems like a pretty good bet. So you can see that EDX markets are coming in or their exchange, and it looks pretty positive. The thing that I just thought about reading all these things today was this. Well, now it makes sense, doesn't it? It makes complete sense because all the time that people were coming in and saying, why are they being so harsh on Binance and Coinbase and suing them and everything else? I think we see the reason why. I think they want to push some things out to get the adults in the room so they can have, and I'm not going to say their buddies or their friends, you can say that, but we've got some older generation type of individuals and institutions getting into the game now, and it seems like they're the ones that are going to run things. And uh, whether that be uh, uh, the options that we're going to have now or later, I think that's just the, the way that things are going to do. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And to finish this all up, we have to remember that just because everything seems positive doesn't mean everything's great. We got to deal with some old stuff. And some of the old stuff that we have to deal with is commingling of funds, like with FTX, the Voyagers, the Celsius, and the things that have actually gone down. Now there's a story from Decrypt, where crypto.com, it's been revealed that they are trading on their own exchange. 
And they say that's totally fine. Look, this is the same thing that was done with FTX. And I know people are going to watch this and go, Rob, why are you spreading FUD? Why are you spreading all this fear, uncertainty, and doubt? It's not my job to not spread FUD. I was a little bit too silent on the Voyager and Celsius issues and also with the FTX. And now it is my, I believe, responsibility to point out and to shed light on things that are coming about. Now it is Crypto.com's job to come out and say, this is why it's okay. This is why we do these things. And that's it. And it's up for you to decide to, of course, do your own research and maybe not use Crypto.com. That is what I'm trying to bring to this situation. Now with Crypto.com, if they're actually trading against you, do you want to go with that? Do you want to use Crypto.com? It's up to you. I'm not your dad. And on top of that, all the negative parts are the people that are in jail or not in jail. Do Kwan was just sentenced to four months in prison in Montenegro for passport fraud. Passport fraud. After everything that, that happened with, uh, with Luna. And I said, you know, uh, this guy should have donated to more political leaders. He'd be out on bail and have some of these charges already dropped. And of course, I called out this guy, Sam Bakeman fried And it, if you don't realize, Sam was a CEO of FTX and co-mingled funds and used your funds to buy uh, a plethora of real estate along with all the other people that were part of FTX. He is still free. No problems. And then this gentleman, Ross Ulbrook from Silk Road, is on two life sentences. Where is the justice in that? Having said that, I will get off my high horse and I will just say that there are also some good things happening in the market uh, for altcoins. I know we talk a lot about Bitcoin and Ethereum. Just remember, this is from, uh, this is Ryan, Ryan Wyatt, and he's the president at OX Polygons or Polygon Networks. And he says they're proposing a major upgrade of Polygon POS to turn it into a ZK EVM Validium, increased scalability, greater decentralization. I hope they can do that. As a ZK EVM Validium, uh, Polygon POS would inherit Ethereum's unmatched security while preserving low fees and high scalability. So again, there's good things going on in altcoins. I think they're going to be a little bit uh, uh, bleeding a little bit to Bitcoin, especially all the different Bitcoin ETFs and Fidelity and all the great stuff. But just remember, there is some upside to some altcoins out there. And I'm not telling you to buy all of them. I'm just telling you there are some positivity. And lastly, just to finish up, I will say this. All this positivity, all the things that are happening, it's amazing to me how it leads into the four-year cycles. And we always talk about this, right? Having all-time high dip reset. Then we got another one in 2016, 2019. We just went over in 2020. We're going through it right now. We're resetting in 2023. And then when the BlackRock ETF gets approved or not approved, it's going to happen right here in the first quarter of 2024. If that happens and it does get approved, what do you think will happen with the Bitcoin halving, which happens in April or May of 2024? Then usually we see an all-time high afterwards. Probably be pretty great. Now, I will play devil's advocate and say that, what if it's not approved, like we just talked about? Well, if it's not approved, just like I said, doesn't matter because BlackRock has already shed light on how the people that actually want Bitcoin and crypto and digital assets. So if it doesn't get approved, I need you to be aware that the market is a little bit erratic and they might just say, you know what, that's a bad news. And they start to have a little bit of a, a major pullback, but it doesn't matter because in two months later, what do we have? The Bitcoin having more scarcity and off we go. And I will just say this lastly, lastly, prices over time do pretty well. In 2012, I don't know if you realize this, but the Bitcoin having the price at the Bitcoin having was $182. And after one year, 510. And of course it topped out around thousand dollars. So it doubled. In 2016, the price of the having around April or May, it was 661. It could be off. Check me in the comments. And after a year, it was at 2600 and then a 10x from there. And in 2020, which is this one makes no sense to me. And I think it was because of all the shenanigans that was going on with the three arrows capital on the FTXs and the Voyagers and the Celsius. The Bitcoin having in April, May of 2020 was 8600 After a year, 58000 and only went up around another 10000 after that. I think the next cycle that we have should be pretty good and i will just leave it at that no predictions because those don't really help anybody i just want you to take a look at the price and go from there and that's it so look 
like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. This is not a set it and forget it type of environment. I think you should be following somebody. If it's not me, just follow somebody you like to listen to as far as the news and go from there. That's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.